You're welcome. On the 21st of September, Donegal sent two teams to the All-Ireland Finals in Crow Park for the first time in the county's history. It'll be the first time ever that a minor team from Donegal have contested the All-Ireland Final. And of course, at senior level, Donegal will be contesting their second All-Ireland senior title in just two years. Jim McGuinness has had tremendous success, of course, winning Ulster three times and already an All-Ireland success under their belt in 2012. We're going to look forward to both games. Joining me in studio are Brendan Deveni, the former St Eunans and Donegal star, a man who scored 14 points in a county final in 1999 and, of course, won a National League title with Donegal in 2007. But, as he said himself often, hugely disappointed that there wasn't more success at championship level. Gary McDade is a teacher at St Eunans College. He's also manager of the Glen Swally GAA club, the current county champions. Gary's very involved at underage football in the college, along with the likes of Colin McFadden, and of course has been twice involved in bringing Glen Swally championship success here in Donegal. Chris McNulty is a sports journalist with the Donegal News. Fair to say he's seen most, if not all, of Donegal's games since Jim McGuinness took over in 2011 and, of course, has a close association with Declan Boner, the minor team manager, who's a columnist with the Donegal News. As much a supporter as, of course, a reporter on Donegal's games, Chris gets a great insight as to what goes on behind the scenes. I'm glad to say he's just returned from California as well. A nice bonus of a trip to travel with Jason Quigley in his second professional bout. Guys, you're all very welcome to Donegal TV as we look forward to this final. Gary, I'm going to start with a minor game. And as I said, you're very involved with the college and Eunice College and uh, you were in here with us on Talking Sport, of course, previously. And we talked about the success at college level moving through then to the county level. Is that what we're seeing the fruits of now, do you think, with Declan Boner's squad? Yeah, if you think back, Charlie, like back to March, the McLaren final was on and we had two Donegal teams competing in the final, obviously ourselves in the college and um, we have six representatives in the minor panel. So we have an, an showing of four. So they have, and then obviously we went on to play Carrick then after that in the All-Ireland quarterfinal and they had three. So they had like, and that's alone, 13 of the minor panel. So by no, it's no mean feat, you know what I mean? When you think about the possibility of the schools playing at the, the top level and getting games against the top teams th- throughout All-Stars, giving them massive experience and building that one one mentality. So it is, I mean, that's 13 players come in there with a huge experience and a huge one mentality behind them has definitely, I'll say, stood to them um, going forward in their campaign in Ulster and that. I mean, if you look past, they used to talk about um, in Tyrone when Tyrone were running the minor show there. So they were they talked about the two football factories in Tyrone, yeah, Oma CBS and so past Dungannon. I mean, like hopefully now we're at the start of something new here. And obviously the success Donegal seniors had in bringing the All Ireland here in 2012. I mean, a lot of those lads. That was only a few years back. I mean, that definitely sowed the seeds for them as well. I mean. I saw Declan talk about in some of his articles that when he got them lads they were heavily involved in soccer and soccer was nearly their number one sport and I would have seen the same in the college like you know we're playing McCrory Cup this year and a, a lot of the lads when they came into the college would have been nearly soccer number one and football number two but now when they're coming to their leaving cert year you know thankfully I would have seen the majority of them and maybe apart from one I would say the majority of them have turned around and football's now their number one and it's a lot of hard work from schools like ourselves in the county and obviously in the wee bit of success that Donegal's having is having a major impact on the kids here in the county and so it can be only good for the future Yeah It's an interesting point uh, Brendan Gary makes and we spoke to Declan uh, earlier this week as well in fact he made that point the success of 2011 uh, Donegal won the first Ulster title in 19 years and reaching an All-Ireland semi-final and then subsequently one in the All Ireland has had a big effect, and you know better than anybody else. You know the strings that are pulled between talented guys who can play both sports. So if you have that success at senior level, it's certainly going to filter through to the young people. Uh, you got to capitalise, and surely, Charlie. I think the top teams in football have have played have played on that for years, and you know the team we're playing in the final, Kerry. You know like the, the the All Blacks of GA really, but if you grew up in Kerry. You know, you want to play football, and that's it, and you want to win all Ireland, and that's your mindset, and that that's huge. Then, as you come on the senior level, it's something you got to tap on. Then, I was just thinking before we played Armagh, them Armagh lads and that team, you no know, fairly young team, they would grew up with being are looking at Armagh, one and Ulster after Ulster, yeah. so they're going to have that in the back of their mind. So I think with with the new management there with McGinney coming in, there's level of player there. Sure, they were. Unfortunately for them, got really good division three. But I always thought them boys are bound to think, hey, you know, we're Armagh, we can come back. And I think they're they're a dangerous team coming in on the back of that same type of mindset. Yeah, Chris, as I said, you know Declan very well, and uh, he does make the point that he took over the squad of players three years ago, and remarkably they're on beaten and competitive football since. So you know, 
we can't say that he, he knew immediately that he had a special group there because that, that grows with time. But certainly over those three years, this has become a very competent team in terms of winning matches. Yeah, and I suppose when, when Declan took over at the start, this was always the plan for him. Like It, it was never a case of just going in with the under-16s and, and stopping there. He, he always had the plan of taking them through that conveyor up to minor level. And I, I don't know about after minor level, but he, he sort of felt that down the years, Donegal football at underage had, had no long-term plan. It was all about the team you were working with in, in that one year and never the long-term bigger picture. And you know, ab- about developing players. Like, we look through successful Donegal minor teams and the amount of dropouts that, that we've had and the amount of guys who have starred at minor level and have never been seen thereafter. You know, wh- what Declan has tried to do is sort of take these guys along with him. And now the hope is, I mean, that you're, go- you're going to get a couple of these guys maybe next year or the year after. They're fit to make, as Declan calls it, the next step. But... You know, I suppose everybody looks at Declan, he's in his first year as minor manager, but it's the third year of his term with these guys. And what what that has enabled him to do is to take his plan, like they're, they're not going into a different manager with a different style of play. You know, they're used to him, he's used to them. They know each other's strengths, weaknesses. And I think that's been probably the big bonus for this group of players is that continuity that probably Donegal minor teams or Donegal teams have never had in the past. Yeah. Brendan, oh, sorry, Gary, you want to just... You can see, the, simil- you can yeah. see the similarities between uh, Kerry and Donegal Miners. I mean, like, if you think of the Kerry School, Skull Ardrish, where Eamon Fitzmaurice teaches and coached the team to the Hogan Cup final this year, yeah. I mean, like, they're, they're backbone by a number of those players as well because it always goes hand in hand, like success at colleges level leads and to success at underage level. And for a long time here in the county, that was a problem. We weren't having success and maybe not having enough teams competing. You know, making and breaking. The role of Stephen McBerty is interesting in the team because, I mean, at club level, he's he's up up to he got the injuries. He was a pure out-and-out scorer. He's playing a very different role for the minors. Yeah, I, th- I think St- Stephen McBerty's class or, or what it, what he has in his locker, it's it's so much. It's almost like a, and a d- different player, a different type of player like what the seniors have with Michael Murphy where you just don't know where you get the best out of because he's he's so good everywhere he plays. And it's, I think, for Declan trying to find where he's going to get the most out of Stephen McBerry, you know, do you leave him inside and capitalise on that? But he, he makes, makes them tick when he comes out the field and he, he just does so so much good work for them. It's, it's It really is hard to know where, where do you play him to get that sort of that perfect game out of him but on the minors as a whole I, th- I think the interesting thing about it somebody from one of the national papers rang me before the Dublin game and they were asking like who do I look, who do I look out for bar maybe Stephen they don't really have like you go back to the Donegal team of 06 that played Kerry Murphy was the man that you know you pointed everybody to he yeah. was the star but now like you look at the likes of Larkin Connor you go to the likes of Kieran Gillespie at full back even Danny Rogers the goalkeeper they've got so many top players it's very very hard to pinpoint that one guy you know and where you could say keep him quiet you'll beat Donegal mm. that won't happen because they've got maybe a dozen players who you could rank as top level minor players which again it's, it's huge for you know an, an opponent coming in and they're looking you know, let's keep Stephen McBerry quiet. What do we do with Larkin Connor, John Campbell, Jimmy Brennan? You know, they've yeah, they've, they've yeah. got so many options there. And they have they have height as well, Gary. That's the thing that stood out for me when I got close to them. They've huge, huge guys there around the middle of the field, which which uh, Declan has used very well. Yeah, like the and they've Tony McLellan at centre half back and Kieran Gillespie full back, and the two of those are two like massive men in the centre of the spine, and obviously. In, even John Campbell the last day they kind of had him out wing forward next to the Hogan side and as soon as they put him in to fall forward yeah. I mean he got 1-2 in the space about 3 minutes it's important maybe to have that mix to their game I mean most of the year we've seen Jamie Brennan and Larkin Connor up there and the two of them have been flying machines so they have and in fairness to Dublin they seem to nullify that threat the last day but it was good for Donegal to have something different then they haven't really used John Campbell as a while out for that high ball yeah. and the mixer this year and was, maybe it was a different facet t- to their game that Dublin mm. hadn't seen but I'm sure like you know Kerry now will be looking ahead and it's going to be difficult, difficult for them but Donegal Ankle are going to have their hands full like I watched the Kerry team against uh, Mayo in the semi-final and I was very impressed with the three full forwards in there especially young Spillane Killing Spillane mm. and then you have the Irish dancer T- Tomas, Tomas O'Shea, O'Shea and from the Angelta club as yeah. well so he has like an, that, as is his last year at football so it is now like he's heading off to dance around the world he's got yeah. a contract for that there very and impressive Ke- Keeley's the other Keeley's guy a, Keeley's a, yeah. the, the, yeah. other, the other lad in the corner and I think the three of those are going to take a bit of containment so they are they're the main scoring threat if they can manage to nullify the three of them but the lad that came on the last day at half time then Liam Carey 
He, he was excellent. He came on for the, for centre half forward. And he scored three points in the second half. Mm-hmm. So I'll say you'll nearly see him starting the next day, or maybe the uh, Jack O'Connor will want to leave him and bring him off the bench because it really is a great burst to them coming off the bench. Mm-hmm. It was nearly like Patrick McBride coming off for the seniors in Donegal yeah. the last day. You know what I mean? Brendan, what about the Jack O'Connor factor? I mean, he didn't take over this minor team without having a good feeling that it'll go on to one. He's won at senior and under-21 level. It'll, you know, nice for his CV to say, I also took Kerry to a minor. So you have to suspect he thought this is a very talented group of players or why would he bother? Yeah, it's, it's interesting you see a, a senior manager like Declan going back to minors. It, that doesn't happen that often, you know, but certainly I think uh, to come back in, he must have thought there's something special there to come back in. And O'Connor knows the stuff. He's a, he's a shrewd guy and, you know, certainly him and Declan all of a, a big tactical plan brought out and as I say that used to be a thing you just didn't see years ago the, the, the minor match is somewhat of a you know let's see what happens kind of scenario and you yeah. never knew and particularly as the lads were saying with Donegal you definitely didn't know what was going to come with Donegal they could score 2-4 and not score you know in the first 10 maybe not score the rest of the half you just mm. didn't know what was going to happen but you have a fair idea what's going to happen now and it's it's getting very serious and like I say it's breeding lads that they're ready to come in for what is you know a very tactical very serious game now which up in the maybe 10 years ago it wasn't like that it wasn't going to happen Chris um, interestingly Kerry haven't been in a final since 2006 when they beat Donegal in, in the semi-final they haven't won a minor title for 20 years which amazed me when it looks at the stats so they're not bringing in a great bit of history in the last while so maybe that's a help to Donegal it is kind of strange because you think Kerry you know and you just automatically think success and at underage level at all Kerry just uh, they, they haven't done it but I suppose what, what they have been able to do and it's it's probably crucial for any county is they've been bringing the players along you know and I suppose you look at, as well at that senior team the likes of James O'Donoghue you know he played against Donegal two years ago in, in Croke Park and he you know he was pretty much made null and void and here he is now you know he's, he's the ne- next best yeah. thing in the kingdom like you know they have been able to bring the players through without maybe having any wild bulk of them at, at the one time Whereas, you know, I suppose you could say the same really about Donegal, you know, that team of 2006 is now pretty much backbone on our senior team, you know, your Leo McLoons, Michael Murphy's, um, those guys com- coming through. Donegal or Kerry, minor, final, who's going to want it? I'll put it to you this way, Charlie, I would give Donegal a chance now, Kerry are, are the favourites, but I, I go back to what Declan Boner said to me last week, he says, Chris, don't congratulate me on reaching the All-Ireland final, congratulate me on winning it. Yeah. Brandon? Well, these boys have seen a lot of, of, of the games. I'm going to go with whatever they say. I haven't seen, I've only seen two of the minor matches this year, so I'm going to leave it okay. to my well educated friends. I'll go with these two, and they're obviously going to go with Donegal, so we'll go all the way. Sure. Gary, I'll give you the first word, I'll give you the last word on it. Um, funny, I was looking this morning just to check the odds, and Donegal were 2 to 1, so they were in carry, were 8 to 15. And like I'll say that's probably a fair reflection on the game coming in but I have a good feeling and I think Donegal will be able to contain that full forward line it'll be interesting to see if they are contained will they bring any of them out will they bring the likes of Killian Spillane out who is kind of their match winner like Donegal Steve McBurdy that could maybe upset the Donegal apple cart in a bit yeah. if, uh, if they don't have plans or ready for that so um, my heart says Donegal and I think I'm going to go with my heart Charlie okay Let's move on to the senior game and uh, I think it's fair to say that after what happened last year in the Ulster final against Monaghan and particularly what happened against Mayo at Crow Park um, very few of us around this table would have expected we'd be here having this conversation today that Donegal had won the Ulster Championship again and we're back in an All-Ireland final. I mean, it's, it's been a remarkable turnaround really, Brendan and you've been there when there's been highs and lows and lows and highs. I mean, is it fair to say that this is this is beyond our wildest expectations. What's happened this year? The lead in Charlie, I think that um, you no, know, the questions that were asked and you've seen we 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 Jim how he responded to it. I think that after last year, you know, we did get a serious spanking and we had a very iffy year, and the league form this year was up and down. And then for me going into the league final with Monaghan after the training camp, I thought we were going to see a very bright and attacking, energetic Donegal. And we didn't, and Monaghan again outplayed us. And then you're thinking, you know are we going to come back? And we weren't sure then. We've seen then, what I did see in that Derry game, for parts of it, was that real, the defence locked down that 45, and I thought, if we play even defensively like that, we were going to be in any match. Yeah. And we didn't need to see it against Antrim. We kind of just messed about in that match. So then it was down that Monaghan game, and what a performance. I thought we were right on the money. I thought, yeah, we're back, we're back. And you've seen the emotion of that. But a lot of people kind of thought, maybe Jim's fourth year won an Ulster, 
that's good. He's answered the critics, and you know, yeah. maybe we'll be, we'll be thinking about that. But I was thinking the Dublin game, and the, the subject came up about Dublin, which caused a whole controversy. But I thought if we play Dublin and we play like that, we can beat them. We can definitely beat them. But then, as we seen with Armagh, then again, I don't know if our performance level dipped or what it was, but Armagh played like us, and I think anybody who plays like us and a, a 15 fat committed men on the pitch who have a certain amount of talent, which Armagh had, they're going to be hard to beat, and that's what Donegal were, and that's what I think a lot of teams were a bit naive, particularly in 2012, playing Donegal, and if you even go back to 2011, and people are on about Gavin and that, if you look at Gilroy, he's set up like us, yeah. you know, yeah. and then waited for the extra bit of talent that supposedly Dublin had at that time, which he had. And really, you have to say he was a lot smarter than Gavin because he decided, hey, was a semi-final, if we have to grind out this, we can. If we were a wee bit smarter, then we'd have won the match compared to Dublin the last day, just going on and trying to blow us away and no mm. plan B. So it was a very, it was one of those years there was a lot of question marks up and down. But now we're, as I say, can we believe we're in a final? And now we're favourites to win the final. Yeah. And you would say, you know, for Donegal at the moment, I think, you would have to look at Jim's, uh, you know, his life, t- his lifespan and and management. And I think he learned a lot from our ma. When we used to play our ma, we had all that heartache. We hated playing our ma. They were a tight team to play, so we didn't money play against them. He's made Donegal like that. And I think he cut his cloth with with Glenties, you know. And I think if he had to get a county job, then it would have been right for me. Learned a lot in that Glenties time. Took the twenty ones, and then the, he had the he had the real good build up. Say to take the Donegal team, and now. Like a, a guy from Gaelic Life phoned me last week and says, is Jim the top manager in the country? Is he on another level? And I said, to who? What other manager could you yeah. even mention in the yeah. same breath as him? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Fitzmaurice, you know, if he won a couple of All-Irelands in the next few years, maybe. maybe but for now, yeah. Jim's yeah. on another level altogether. Yeah. We, have we evolved, Gary? I mean, you, you've been with Glenn Swally bringing, you know, they've come through from junior to intermediate to senior and they've won a couple of championships and people didn't expect them to do it really. And you've been involved in the management. You know, we've seen the likes of Oren McNeilis come through. We've seen uh, Ryan McHugh come through as well. Before that, we had Paddy McGrath coming through. Obviously, Murphy was also always going to come through. I mean, Jim seems to be able to, to pick them. Paddy McBurley is another prime example of it. Have we evolved even from last year? And has he learned from the experience of last year? Yeah, and never mind last year. I would even say right back to 2011, 11, you can see huge involvement in the, or evolving from the players. Like, the last day, they didn't panic whatsoever. In Croke Park against Dublin, whereas maybe if you think back 2011, there was a wee bit of panic stations at different stages of the game. They sh- showed massive composure the last day on the ball and experience. When they needed to go fast, they did it fast. When they needed to hold the ball and slow it down, they did that as well. But if you think of it as well, like one requires investment. Yeah. And this team have invested, and the county board and the financial backers behind the team have invested. I mean, one is not cheap. So, so it's not. And the Euro has. has been backed into the team and the results are mm. proven good mm. till to date and long may continue in yeah. the future. I mean, if you if you look at the setup they have is second to none. I mean, like they were away in the Algarve this year on a training camp, so they were away in Johnstown House for five days. Helicopters provided, like I mean, I mean that's right up there with the best. And when you have that kind of mentality that this is the way we train, this is the way we set up, then it, it can be good for all the players in the camp. I mean, this they're they're kind of like we have, we have to perform today. We have everything been laid on for us. Yeah, Chris, Jimmy Gillis has sat in the studio with me back at the beginning of the year, and we talked about last year, and he talked about the difficulties that were there, and you need traction and. He was able to rhyme off the number of training sessions that people missed and the injuries that people picked up. And there was a huge controversy in relation to the the club championship. We were just talking about it there before we started uh, uh, the programme here. You know, uh, we have to wait now until it's over. But the clubs agreed to that. And he said hats off to the clubs for that. And uh, one thing that he said to me, the clubs have given us an opportunity. It's up to us now to grab that opportunity by the scruff of the neck and use it to the best of our ability. And there's no question they've done that. Yeah, that's that's absolutely right. I suppose you go back to last year and everybody just thought it was a, a cheap excuse that, you know, he, he trolled out these um, statistics about training and, you know, Carl Lacey missed 40 of 60 training sessions, Neil Gallagher. Yeah. But if you look at the players that he mentioned at that time, they're players who now, we look at this year, who have been the key men. You know, you look at Carl Lacey's involvement in everything about Donegal like he probably doesn't have that dynamic sort of thing he had going in 2012 but he's still so important. Neil Gallagher for me 
uh, if I was picking the footballer of the year, I would actually give it to Neil Gallagher because I think in, in the games that Donegal have played this year, Neil's influence at key times, his composure on the ball, his use of the ball, which I suppose isn't something we would always have associated Neil Gallagher with, yeah. but y- you talk of evolution and you look at players like that that have added things to their game. You know, we look at Neil Gallagher of four years ago, he was the big sort of traditional midfielder, he got up caught yeah. it left it on but he's had to add to his game you know he had, he had to jump out of the way to get out of Colin McFadden's <laughs> way I, I, I didn't realise it on the day and I looked at it and I said what's Neil Guller doing up there he actually was ahead of Colin yeah. Anthony when he was putting yeah. the ball in the net you know yeah, and yeah. that sort of thing's right through the team you know I was talking off off mic about Paddy McGrath and his sort of composure on the ball and he's making those Burst out of defence that we would have associated with maybe Frank McGlynn, Carl Lacey. In 2011, Paddy McGrath, wouldn't, he wouldn't have had those skills in his locker, but he's added to them. And that's all about the evolution, you know, even in terms of players and personnel, what the players there have done. Like Murphy was talking a couple of years ago about working on his left foot. And, uh, Jim's always won for the little details and they mean so, so much to him. And I think that's why last year hurt so much that he didn't have the players in the circle all the time you know they were going away and playing for Glen Swally for a month in between an Ulster semi-final and final which mm. at that stage Monaghan had 16 more training sessions than Donegal now for a team like Donegal it's all about preparation repetition just keep doing it doing it doing it and when it comes to match day it's automatic they were almost back to this thing of, of the old style Donegal of turn up and hoping for the best like and you look even at, at Mayo last year and it's probably unfair on Eamon to, to single this out but you look at Eamon McGee sent off against Mayo last year it was just a guy get me out of here I, I don't yeah. want to be here yeah. you yeah. know and Carol Lacey talks about looking around the dressing room at half time and you just you know you're beaten yeah. and that, that just it was the one day under Jim McGuinness that it was just it was a freak that game against Mayo last year and it's no coincidence that the clubs now have sort of wrong to say maybe back because it suggests the clubs didn't back him last year but mm. they've sort of given that wee bit of leeway mm. and we're, you know when Jim McGuinness takes his guys to the Algarve for a week to Johnstown House for five days you know Brian McGuigan was writing this week that five days in Johnstown House was like three weeks of training and again for a, a guy that's so well prepared what that has done for this team is it's, it's phenomenal Brendan, let's just move on then to Kerry. Um, you know, they were very impressive against Cork in the Munster final. A lot of people said Cork were very poor that day, but Cork performed pretty well when they got to Crow Park. Then they gave Mayo a right run for it. Um, and their two matches against Mayo were epic games, uh, really. You could say that if, if you wanted to be if you wanted to be very unfair, you could say, well, it was two bad teams playing great football against one another. But that's not the way it was because... Kerry had it won, then they had it lost, then they got a draw, and the, the replay was a similar type of thing. I mean, how much are they going to take out of those two matches and bring with them? Because my view is they're a much better team after those two matches than they were before they went into them. Yeah, I, I just as I say, Fitzmaurice, is he going to come with something new? If I was Fitzmaurice, I hope he's not listening to this. I don't want to yeah. give him any tactics. But um, I wouldn't play uh, Donahue or Donahue inside because the two McGee's will eat them up, and I hope they're inside. Right? Yeah. I mean, I I think they would they would they should rotate the two guys and and, and try and because there won't be any space inside. There never is, and if they're reliant on the two guys, which I hope they are, then you know Donegal definitely won the match. But I think he's he's a shrewd guy. He's going to have to have some plan to open up space. But not only that, he's going to have a plan to sit. Now they were obviously pulling sweepers back, and uh, against Mayo and and making it tough for them. And as we see me Mayo. You know Mayo just go gung ho with everything. And twice they act the the matches won. And he couldn't get across the line. But Kerry have learned a lot. Will they're ready for us or not? Depends on his tactics on the day. And I think you're going to see a different Kerry play against us. I think they'll sit against us somewhat and try and make it a, a wee bit of a dogfight. Now, we're good at that, but they have a lot of talented players. And the only thing about Kerry is, you know, they have this wee bit aura around them. Yeah. We've always struggled with them. Like I, When we played them, I can remember beating them once when I played. And even in 2012... They had a chance for an equalising point at the very end. Do you remember? Right, it was a one yeah, team yeah, yeah, and yeah. Kerry weren't really at themselves. No. So mm. they do bring this bit of aura and stuff with them, but mm. it's it's all set up for a fantastic match. Yeah. Gary, I mean, tactically, uh, people would look at Glenn Swally, what you've done over the years, the last few years particularly, with switching players in and out, Neil Goller starting at full forward, Michael coming out to midfield, Kieran Boner playing here, there and everywhere and all that sort of stuff. Some might say that, uh, you know, the taxes of Glenn Swally very much mirror perhaps what Donegal have been doing in terms of utilising the talent that you have and getting the very best out of them. Yeah. Uh, the one county champions. If you were Eamon Fitzmaurice, 
as as Declan was out. Uh, sorry, Brendan was outlining there. What what would you be doing? Oh, I hope he's not listening. Uh, no, no, we don't want to give him any pointers. Yes, he's a master tactician, you know. And I know he, that. He, he, I said, know he that. said one and cost a lot, but Glenn, it was cheap at Glen Swally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well um, like if you look back at, at Kerry's games this year, Claire ran them to four points. Yeah. And they, they were right on the game, right up to the, the last 10 minutes. So they were, and they were very defensively set up, Claire. So they were, and this is a Division 4 team. Fair enough, they came out of Division 4. And they played a sweeper, the hurler. The lad, what do you call him? Drop back. Collins was the, it? the the son. The, yeah, the yeah, manager yeah, son. He yeah. drops back a sweeper for them. And even Fitzmaurice in that game pushed the corner back up on him. So he did, and they went man to man on that game. Then they completely changed in for the monster final. So he did. He brought probably as good a ball ball player around as in the country, Declan Sullivan, mm-hmm. and and played him as sweeper and he had a fantastic game and cut out the threat of the Cork full forward line that day. I think he's going to have to maybe set up something. Similar enough to that there. If you think back how Monon beat Donegal, they murdered them. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And, mm. and I would have said that for a long time. Like if you're going to play against them, you have to murder them. And it's just going to be a game of dog eat dog and it's who's yeah. going to grind it out. But it's fair to say, Gary, I mean, what we've seen in the Kerry defence hasn't been overly impressive really when they've been put under that wee bit of pressure. And when when Mayo ran at them with 14 men, mm. I mean, they destroyed them. Yeah. And and like and if you think Galway even got t- two goals yeah. against them and like yeah. Mayo have scored four, four goals against them in the two games as well. Yeah. And like the Kerry keeper, I wouldn't, be overly excited about him like and I think there's definitely goals there for Donegal in that game I mean like he's not the most he doesn't fill you with, with confidence I'm sure the Kerry backs feel feel that way as well but I suppose then as well like Kerry believe that all Ireland's is their right of passage as Brennan talked about there I mean yeah. the Ray has done it so they are and they beat a very good Mayo team like and I think that group of Mayo players are the right man's in charge there's an all Ireland waiting there for them as well I think those two tough games I'll stand to carry yeah. without a shadow of a doubt now when it, when it comes down to it. They know they've been in a battle twice and they mm-hmm. came out of the right side of the battle. Yeah. And I'm sure Amos Fitzmaurice will be drilling that home to the boys this, this week. And Tony Gall like battles, but Eamon Fitzmaurice has to make this a battle for them for to, get, to, to give them a chance. And mm-hmm. I'm sure Brendan touched on as well, like James O'Donnell is going to have a few sleepless nights. He's not going to want to see... <laughs> <laughs> Neil McGee coming come <laughs> near him and, for and a Sunday Ke- afternoon and Kieran Donnelly's not <laughs> wanting to see Eamon yeah. McGee well, coming near him Eamon did a great job of him on, on, back in 2012 in the quarter final Chris I know you're a good guy with the stats and all that sort of stuff and an interesting point we're talking about uh, Donaghy uh, you know somebody said to me if they hadn't have been in trouble against Mayo in the first game he wouldn't have been he wouldn't even have been used off the bench it was a desperate thing they threw him in to bomb the ball up and it worked very well and then he played very well in the replay but he hasn't been playing well. His fitness levels have been questionable and all that sort of stuff, you know. And I think, as Brendan said, Donaghy and James O'Donoghue, and particularly O'Donoghue, have been the score. He's the scorer in chief, you know. If he's nullified, where's the danger going to come from? Well, I think that's where Donegal and Kerry um, greatly differ. I think, really, outside of Donaghy and O'Donoghue, they don't have that player that's really going to hurt you with the big, big scores. Um, you know, they do have Brian Sheehan that has those long range frees in his locker and stuff, but the disciplined way Donegal play, I don't think that would really become a factor. Now, looking at Donegal's defence, they've managed to nullify pretty much every full forward line they've played against. Like in five games this year, Donegal have only conceded a combined one six to full forward lines. And what Brenton was touching on about Donaghy, I think if if Kerry start Donaghy, Donegal will be rubbing their hands because there's clearly then that one tactic of going long. Yeah. What they're probably going to try and do is keep it that dog fight, keep it tight, and maybe later on then go for Donaghy going for that match one and goal and stuff. But like G- Gary was talking there about the goals. I mean, there's goals all over this Donegal team. You know, how many times have we not seen Neil McGee as the most advanced Donegal player on the field? Mm. There's, there's goals in our half back line from your Anthony Thompson's, Frank McGlynn's. You look at Rory Kevin and Christy Toy, right? You know, you could rhyme off maybe a dozen or sure. 13 of those Donegal guys that it's that sort of interchange that that way they play that they're all, they're almost like a blanket attack at at some stage yeah. you know when when mm. they can make that devastating burst but where Donegal I feel can and will win the game as the defence and last week under that ferocious barrage that we were under from Dublin in that 2025 20, minutes mm. over 70 minutes we conceded only four frees inside our 45 
And now you think about the discipline that's involved in yeah, that. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. And goals as well. We've been very, very good. That may all freak aside last year. In 23 championship games, we've kept 16 clean sheets. And look at the goals. A penalty against Kevin. A rebounded penalty against Kevin. And then those late goals against Cork and Kerry in 2012, which absolutely and utterly, yeah. it just made Jim so angry because... The guys had switched off and sort of yeah. forgot what yeah. they were doing, you know. Mm. They almost had the perfect scenarios in those two games. And again, against Armagh, it was a freak of a goal. Yeah. You know, there, there's no team has really scored And against that. Monaghan, you could say it was a freak of a goal as well. A mistake or a slip by Frank McGlynn that doesn't happen, and, you know. And you yeah. probably Frank McGlynn's first mistake in Championship football. Mm -hmm. like, and again, they're yeah. not being well worked. They're not being prized open for goals. OK, Jeremy Connolly had a chance last week, which mm. Papa, Papa got down very, very well to save. But another thing, just an interesting thing on stats in Donegal is I was looking last week Bernard Brogan and Stephen Cluxton fluffed frees that you would have you'd have put the mortgage on them to yeah. score I mean Brogan's one in the 45th minute was 30 yards out perfect for the right footed kicker and he's mm. tailed it I mean he put it that far wide it nearly, it nearly went into the Hogan stand like it just it yeah, yeah. curled away just completely wrong for him the amount of high level free tickers that have buckled against Donegal you know to me it's gone beyond being a coincidence if you look at Rory Began in the Ulster final, he only kicked two out of five. You go way back to last year against Tyrone when um, Niall Morgan, Stephen O'Neill and Sean Kavanagh all tried it. And I mean, they're guys that you look at Kavanagh this year against Down, you would put the house on him mm. in that pressure, high, high pressure situation, the capacity crowd. Nobody seems to hold their nerve against Donegal. The best sort of conversion rates, like Bernard Brogan had an 88% conversion rate in the league and championship this year and to buckle that against Donegal <laughs> you, you've got to wonder why but the best guys have been the two guys from Antrim um, Neeson and is, is it McCann yeah. who had 100% but I mean that was a game that, that was beyond them beyond so them. Yeah. you know you've just got to it's wonder when that pressure comes on what yeah. did Donegal do to you that just psychs okay. you out of it <laughs> Before we finish, Brian, I want to talk to you about Colm Anthony McFadden. I mean, you've played in there. You know what it's like when, you know, people say, well, it depends on the quality of the ball that's coming in. And by his own standards, by the standards that he set himself, he's had a relatively poor season because we have come to expect so much from him. I was amazed and, and delighted with the coolness he showed when he got that chance. I mean, that was the, that was the, the match one and goal. We were going to win the game anyway. Probably, but that was the one that did it. I mean, for him, how important was that now to have that semi-final, score that free, get that fisted point with the final coming up on a, you know, on, a, on the twenty-first of September? Yeah, well, you know, for, forwards about confidence, Charlie. <clears throat> probably for him and for us, you know, we're excited about that because we were managing this year without him, as you say, hitting the heights that he's capable of, and uh, you know, for him, the last day, everybody's delighted for him, and you know, just to be because he is a fulcrum of the attack, no matter what. Like and you can't replace that experience with anything and you know it's fantastic for him and everybody's saying could it happen for him on the day like I never thought he was going to play brilliant against Dublin yeah. but to get what he did was exactly what you thought right that's you now and the confidence will kick on from that because you can't go from a low ebb to just being brilliant on the day so what he did actually was brilliant and you know just talking about players of the year there, I was just thinking like for me Neil McGee I mean, mm. you know the mm. funny thing about McGee, we just expect McGee now yeah. to take out and like not take out the forward, but the best mm. forwards in Ireland. Yeah. If you look at McManus the last day, McManus was unbelievable before that game mm. he spent to have Brogan the last day. We just expect this man McGee to nullify yeah. every, no matter who it is, and you can be sure as as well, says, rubbing your hands about Donahue being full forward, you were rubbing your hands if if uh, Donahue lines in full forward, McGee's marking him. Mm. Because for me I think he's he's our player there. Yeah. Okay, we're going to have to wrap it up, Gary. I'll come back to you to start. Um, can we can we win our second All Ireland in in three years? Can Jim McGuinness create the sort of history or continue to to continue the history that he's already provided since he took over senior team manager? Yeah, I mean, again, I checked the bookies this morning before I came as well. Like in Donegal, our um, favourites for the game, so they are, and I'll say that's a fair assumption everyone would think that going into the game and probably Donegal they have huge versatility in their team like you talked there about the likes of Neil um, I watched the game against Armagh from the Davin stand so the upper Davin and um, it was actually you, you could see really the patterns of play developing he's actually helping Paddy McGrath double team Kyle Carragher yeah. in that game every yeah. time so yeah. he was and he's like, got better with age and then, and, and then <laughs> I've said that to him by the to, way to take that like from the Armagh game to the semi-final <laughs> where he took Michael Dara 
into the full forward line. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, and yeah. as you said, it's it's something that we would have used him before in club level, and he's very versatile like, like that there. And then, of course, you have the likes of Michael, so you can who who has basically been given sort of a free role because he's such a smart, intelligent player. He can he just goes where he thinks he's most dangerous. I mean, he went into full forward that last day, one ball in, ball ends ball, up in the back yeah. of the net. Ryan McHugh has energy. He's, I mean, like he's he got great space against the Dubs the last day. Eamon Fitzmaurice was going to want to make sure maybe it likes the runners, likes Ryan McHugh, and, and when Patrick McBride comes on, when they got that run and space, they hurt Dublin big time. So, so they can. So I'm sure Eamon Fitzmaurice is going to be looking at those two lads, especially because they were a major threat to the mm. Dubs the last day. Can they cut their threat as well? But there's a lot of threats for Eamon Fitzmaurice to look at, and I think there's more threats for Eamon Fitzmaurice to worry about than Jim McGuinness to worry about on the carry side. So. On that, I would give it to Donegal. Chris? Yeah, I'd, I'd have to side with Donegal. You know, for, for that reason, again, if you look at what Jim McGuinness is going to be looking at, what Eamon Fitzmaurice is going to be looking Jim has so many aces up his sleeve. And you look at his bench the last day, like Martin McElhenney coming off it, Paddy McBurdy c- coming off it. How could you use Jigger? I mean, you, you know, he, he's got that something different that we probably haven't had under Jim. You know, he just just gives you that that we something different uh, if it's so, if it is so needed. Um, Donegal are our favourites in this for a reason, and Brenton talked earlier on about that aura here. I have, to me, that probably it's something we talk about. Something supporters, you know, they talk about these thirty six All Irelands. What McGuinness to me would do is everything stripped bare, and it's just another football team, another game, and another arena, and it it just so happens. And he said this to me before the twenty twelve final. I found it almost unbelievable. He says it just so happens there's a cup for this one. You know, yeah. it it just yeah. he simplifies everything down to the nth degree. And if it's Derry in the first round, Antrim in the first round, or if it's an All Ireland final, it stays the same, and nothing nothing changes. So mm. for me, I would be predicting uh, not a I suppose a comfortable D- Donegal victory, but I, I think Donegal will win the game well. Okay. Brendan, you'll be working on the day uh, up on the high uh, echelons of Crow Park. You'll be nervous like the rest of every Donegal golf person. And I know more than anything, you'd love to be down there with the green and gold on you, playing as a player, having experienced it for you know a decade as as a player. Is it, are we going to create more history uh, on that particular day and and bring another Sam back here to Donegal? Yeah, well, see, being up there, Terry, is the lads. It's fantastic just to be there. You know yourself. I mean, yeah. there's something so magical about it. You kind of feel. You know, you're that proud of Donegal, but it's great being up being involved in the occasion. But it, goals is a huge thing for yeah. me. Goals is the one, conceding and scoring. And it's what done us. So it beat Dublin the last day. Now, the thing about Kerry is, I think Kerry will, will learn and look back and say, if Gavin went under the game with one plan, and when we like uh, answered the questions on that, there was no other question to be answered. And I think if it's Morris was a plan, it's an All-Ireland final, no matter what happens, I don't think we'll pull away too much if we do go three or four up. And then if we can see their goal then when we're at that, you know, there yeah. could be a passage of play in it. I think this game will be in the melting pot. I think Kerry will sit a bit and it'll be a wee bit topsy-turvy. Like the lads say, I think we could get a bit of a cushion. As long as you don't get see the goal then, we'll win the match. But I think it'll be maybe a two or three point victory for Donegal. Hopefully, Charlie, and you know, just looking forward to it so much. Okay. Well, that's it. Uh, we're all looking forward to it, as you can imagine, as is every Donegal person, whether living in the county or everywhere in the world, and the number of messages we get from people is just remarkable. September the 21st, an historic day for Donegal as our minors and seniors go to Crow Park to take part in those All-Ireland finals. Thanks to my guests, Chris McNulty, Brendan Devenny and Gary McDade for joining us today. Much more to come from Donegal TV in the uh, week ahead of the match. Join us for that action, but for now, good evening. <laughs>